Jim from Easy Tankless, and today we're going to discuss some of the common mistakes that home installers and plumbers alike often make when putting in a tankless heater. On our tankless heaters, the model Deluxe and Ultra, they are a direct vent model. That means they take their air from outside for combustion. They draw it into the heater from outside the home, then the exhaust goes back out through the same concentric pipe. The, the pipe looks like this that comes with the heater, it's included. And you have an elbow which is 94 degree bend. And there's actually two pipes in one. This outer area is air intake. And this area here is where the air comes in. This is the exhaust. This inner area of this pipe is the exhaust going out. So the reason the pipe is cool, as we explain in our other videos, is because the incoming air cools this exterior surface. There's this piece and it's included. It goes on here like this. Okay? This piece is part of this assembly and it needs to be installed. We are seeing photos now of heaters that have been installed where they are not putting in this piece and it will look like this when it's put together. Now why this doesn't work and this is a critical error. This causes intake air to be taken in from inside the home. The combustion air comes from in the room not from outside the house. But even more critical is in cold climates with high wind, the wind can come in the pipe and go into the home through this opening and it can freeze the heater. Why? Because when this is sealed with this ring, this heater body is also closed. So even though wind might try to blow into this pipe, when the heater is not operating, it can't come in because it has no place to go. The, the heater is sealed. So it's, it's like blowing into a, a, a straw when you have the end pinched. So visualize that this is open like this. Well, not only is this heater getting its intake air supply from in the room that it's mounted instead of from outside, defeating the purpose of direct vent. But not only that, if this heater happens to be in the same room as another air consuming gas fired appliance like a furnace or a dryer or even the range hood of a stove, visualize that this other device, if it's taking its intake air from the room by its normal design, it's going to find intake air by the easiest path possible. If you have a well-sealed home or basement, for instance, and there's a furnace sitting there in the same room as the heater, and when that turns on in the cold winter time and that furnace is needing that intake air, that combustion air, and it's taking it from that room, then it's going to suck cold air down this pipe. Why? Because there's an opening here. It's the same way with the old tank type heaters. They had that cone that sat up on top and then it just naturally drafted. When the furnace would kick on, cold air would come pouring backwards down that pipe. So what happens is your heater freezes. So the piece goes on the exhaust pipe and then the exhaust pipe plugs in. This is the exhaust and this is the intake side. When you're all done, you either have it going up with an extension and then out, or you've got the elbow, the 94 degree elbow going directly out through the wall, which is the best installation. Then you're going to follow with your sealant tape, and you're, you're going to put it on there, and you're going to seal this joint like this with this duct sealant tape high temperature aluminum duct sealant tape, just exactly like that. About the 94 degree bend, I think when I hold this up you can see that this actually does slope downhill. 
And in our other videos, we talk about that. The reason that you don't force this to be horizontal, that this has to have a downward slope, this exhaust and intake, is so that condensation drains back out of the pipe and drips off of it. You just can't have condensation running back down inside the heater. It will corrode the internal components and cause a premature failure of the unit. And this new style horizontal direct vent through the wall is becoming very popular with many manufacturers. Most of the industry is switching. Why? Because when you go straight through the roof, you need a complicated roof weather cap on top of the pipe. And you need a complicated angled ceiling piece that, that ties into your shingles and it has to have different angles available depending on the pitch of the roof and you have to maintain a seal there or you have a leak and then as the condensation is dripping down this, this vertical pipe you have to have a complicated condensation trap device with a drain hose coming off and going to like a floor drain in the basement or whatever room this design here which you will find now on many of the manufacturer's units is just foolproof. It has a 94 degree bend forcing you basically to install this with a slight downward angle. And you have an external joint on the side of the building where this exits. And it doesn't have to be a complicated seal because you don't have it pointing up or rainwater is pouring down directly into it or running down a roof. So this is really the best way. If the heater you want to install is located in the center of the house, many times it's actually easier to move the location of the heater to an exterior wall so that it can have a direct outlet for its exhaust and its intake air directly through a wall to the exterior of the building. It's easier to move those cold and hot water pipes and that gas line and that electrical service than it is to spend a lot of money and a lot of time with a convoluted and complicated vertical exhaust system that may actually not work very well. One thing to keep in mind also about direct vent heaters with concentric pipes or even the ones that use two pipes that intake and an exhaust, the heater is drawing that air from outside and the longer the pipe, the more difficult it is for the, for the combustion fan to, to suck in that air. It's like a snorkel. There's only a, a certain distance that you can use a snorkel, a length of a snorkel. Beyond that, it's not possible to, for your lung capacity to pull in air over that long tube. And this is also part of it. These, these tankless direct vent heaters from all manufacturers they work the best when they have a short tract where they have their intake air coming down a short pipe. The shorter is the best. Then the fan doesn't work so hard to pull in that air. When the heater wants to run to make a lot of hot water, you got the faucet turned on all the way or you're running two showers, it has an easy access to its combustion air that it needs to increase that flame to make a lot of hot water. It's all really, really simple. And when you try to shortcut these devices, they just don't work properly. About direct vent exhaust systems, you just simply cannot plug this into the old pipe or the old chimney or the old pipe for the old tank type water heater. It just doesn't work. It's very simple why it doesn't work. The two pipes, as I've explained in many videos, one is intake, that's this outer area, and the inner part is exhaust. So visualize that exhaust is the byproducts of combustion, there's no oxygen left. It was used, it was burned in the firing process. So exhaust coming out can't be used to make combustion because of the lack of oxygen in that exhaust. So if you put exhaust into a chimney, and so if you, for example, just plug this into some chimney, well, it's also its intake. So visualize that exhaust goes in this chimney at the same time that it's trying to get air to breathe, to make more fire. Well, it can't breathe its own exhaust. It needs clean air, and that's why this is the intake and this is the exhaust outside in the open atmosphere. 
Thank you for your attention and consideration.